we are back for our second teaching tips in 12 minutes or less. Last week was our first week and I failed very miserably on keeping it under 12 minutes so I'm really going to try to keep it under 12 minutes this week. Our topic this week is text features. So we are going to dive deeper into virtual text feature activities for distance learning. Um, so we're going to dive into three activities for text features that you can use during your distance learning activities. If you are watching this and you are not in a distance learning environment, you can still use these activities digitally within your classroom. So we're finding a lot of teachers that are teaching either all virtual, hybrid, or in person, but the students are on their laptops or iPads or Chromebooks because they have to social distance. So um, I want to bring you guys some activities that students can do and learn all about text features during this time. So very quickly, I like to give you guys a brief overview of the common core relations of the topic that we are going to talk about for the week. So let's talk about common core's thoughts on text features. Beginning grades, primary grades, K1, they have our students being able to simply identify text features and find them in a text and be able to identify which ones they are. And then you go a little bit deeper and they have to describe what those text features do. For example, if you ask them what a caption does, they can tell you a caption is the um, sentence or paragraph under a photograph that gives me more information. And then once you get a little bit deeper in maybe third grade, students have to be able to find and locate text features in a text and then uh, explain how it helps provide more information on the text. So they will be able to identify and describe every single text feature and then they will be able to use text features while reading passages or books and they will be able to describe how those text features help them get a deeper understanding of the text. So we're going to talk about our first tip, and that tip is focused on an interactive read aloud. Now, typically an interactive read aloud is being able to dive into a text with your students um, sitting at the carpet, and you guys can stop and talk about each page. It's going to look a little bit different this year. So possibly this will be over a Zoom call. Possibly this will be over a Meet call. Um, but you're going to have your students tune in while you do an interactive read aloud. And what I would suggest doing is reading a story or a, a nonfiction text and asking the students at home to have a whiteboard. So I know some teachers have whiteboards for each of the students throughout the day that they pull um, and use. So have your students grab their whiteboard. If you don't have students with a whiteboard at home, maybe just have them grab a piece of paper and like section it into uh, six little squares so that each answer they can display their um, answer. But you're going to have the students grab their whiteboard. During your interactive read aloud, you are going to read the story. And for each page that you get to in the story, you're going to ask the students to stop and think and write down a list of any text feature they might see on that page. Now, if that seems a little bit too big for your kindergarten or first grade students, um, you can maybe have them write one text feature that they see, or you could even say, um, if you want to make it even simpler for your students who are first learning text features, you can ask them to give a thumbs up, thumbs down, like, do you see bold print on this text? And you'll display the text after reading, or the page, and you'll ask them if they see any bold print. So if your students are not ready to view a page and identify the text features that they see like this. They could write heading, caption, photograph. Um, if your kids aren't there yet, you can always do a thumbs up, thumbs down game during your interactive read aloud asking them if they see a map or asking if they see um, a table of contents on this page. So you can definitely differentiate your interactive read aloud with your students. Um, asking them to be able to identify, like for example, this page has a big old map. Um, you definitely want to find nonfiction text that does offer all of these things because there are a lot of like leveled readers that um, maybe only have like three or four 
text feature example. So definitely uh, do a big browse through your library to find the right one. Our second text features tip is going to be using a website called Flipgrid. And Flipgrid has become a very um, popular website to use for students because it gives the students a little bit more control over showing what they know. So what I would suggest doing is, so when you make Flipgrid, you can make different topics. And you would, for example, make a topic for text features. And you would provide them with an image or a sample text feature page or a sample um, book page or magazine cutout, and you would have the students record themselves identifying the text features that they see in that picture and describing how it helps in the text. Now, I do suggest when you are setting up this uh, Flipgrid assignment to Google um, free magazine articles for students, and you'll be able to find a great amount of magazine articles that will work digitally on your computer. Um, I was going to suggest getting like your classroom magazines that you have and photocopying them. However, there is some copyright issues with that. So I would suggest maybe no photocopying for now unless you want to do a little deep dive into those rules. But you can find plenty of free articles that you can just display to the students if you're going to do that, you have to make sure it is a private link that only your students can view because, again, you really don't want to get into any copyright issues. So the cool thing about Flipgrid is that the students are going to identify, for example, I see a heading in this picture, and they're going to maybe describe what that heading is going to tell them about the rest of the text. They could also say, I see a photograph in this picture, and they can um, explain a little bit about how that photograph or how that text feature amplifies or gives more information about the text. Then with Flipgrid, the students can watch their friends' responses to the topic and give feedback for them. So maybe if um, James did a Flipgrid and he forgot photograph. The students can respond to James and they can say, hey James, don't forget there's a photograph in this magazine article and James can watch his friends' responses and it's really a, a great collaborative time for the students because uh, with social distancing, they're not having as much communication right now, so it's definitely a great time or a great app to use for your students to be able to discuss and dive deeper into that content. Our third and final tip is actually a freebie for you, so if you are interested, there is a link in the description for you to grab. Uh, let me walk you through it before you uh, go grab it real quick. So I have it pulled up next to me. Um, the link is going to be provided in both Google Slides and Seesaw, so you can pick which one you want based off of what um, platform you use most of in your classroom. And there are nine slides in this activity, and the students are going to look at the text feature example, and they are going to drag and drop the names of the text feature that they see. And this is going to help them identify the text feature. And then the two boxes at the bottom are for the definition of the text feature and how it helps uh, students. So for example, the photograph is going to say a real image taken with a camera. So the students are going to know the difference between a photograph and an illustration is that the photograph is a real image and then an illustration says an image that is drawn by someone on a piece of paper on a computer. So those are your two definitions. And then it's going to dive a little bit deeper and it's going to ask how it helps the reader. So it's going to say like the illustration helps the reader see a hand-drawn example of something in the text. And then the photograph says, helps the reader see a real life example of something in the text. So the students are going to be able to identify the text feature in this free activity, and then they're going to be able to identify the definition and the um, way that it helps the reader. So if you're interested in anything else, I have a link to a blog post in the description. This blog post is going to take you in a deeper dive of text features, and it's going to kind of break apart how to teach text features both in a virtual classroom and in a normal classroom setting. I also have a link in the description to a full text features unit. Um, so the freebie that you're getting is part of 
the full unit. So if you are interested in the full unit, it is also in the description. Um, that concludes our three tips for virtual text features today. If you have any requests for future videos, please let me know in the comments. Also give me a like and subscribe to make sure that you're going to get future content and future videos sent directly to you. Um, thank you guys for tuning in today and I will see you next Friday with more teacher tips. Thank you.